black on here. Yeah, we got bad black. We got light skin <laughs> over there, Ken. <laughs> you know what though? Ken is the light skin brother, but he don't do light skin brother stuff like uh no, yes, yes he do. Yeah. <laughs> Ken hit us up the other night. He do dark skin brother stuff. Nah, Ken hit us up the other night at 1 30 in the morning on Marco Polo eating mountains of fried chicken. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, yeah. it if you ain't right. <laughs> Marco Polo, twelve thirty at night, eating fried chicken. That's <laughs> fine though. He's one of us. Word up, uh, yo. So we we live. This is the Beat People Podcast, episode forty four. I got a uh, my mob dab crew in the place. Uh, we got Aaron. What's going on, bro? Hey, how's it going, man? How you feeling today? Good. How are you? Good, man. Word. Ready to, get, uh, ready to get into it, man. I got a lot. Got, got a lot to talk about today. Yeah, no doubt. I wish Lee was on because I kind of wanted him to spaz out about uh <laughs> about that price hike. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was bugging me out, man. Oh, we, we already got somebody that's gonna spaz out. You know who? He in the he in the he in the chat right now. Ken, he, he about to spaz out about that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right. What's going on, Ken? Can Ken, Ken trying to get himself together. He he he's uh he's doing like TLC when they put tape over their mouth and he was striking oh, because man. he don't he don't believe in what's going on. <laughs> 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 Yo, we got Shiro. What's going on, bro? What up, chilling, chilling. Word, man. Good to have you on, man. Word. Word up and D still, sub bro. Man, I'm chill. You already know. Organizing my case today, trying to trying to be like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, you 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 forging your own path right now, bro. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Straight yeah, up. <laughs> I'm trying to be like y'all. I started off with a mother 32. Now I got all these mothers in the crib, yo. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is the is the chat working? Uh, I just seen you say what up. Okay, cool. I, I just want to be sure. On there, okay, I just wanted to be sure. All good. So, yo, I wanted to start out, man. Um, I know I got a couple things I I wanted to I wanted to kind of get get a feel on what you guys is on for it. But so here's the deal, y'all know what I've been on lately is kind of starting on my journey with with like live beat sets. That's something I've never done. All the stuff. That I've done and all the performances I've done and bro, I've even I've even uh, talked at colleges. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I've never performed a live beat set because you know my performances have always centered around me being an MC, right? Yeah. And so over the last couple of years, I've over the last few years, last many years at this point, I've gotten more into beat making than MC, and so <clears throat> which is weird because that started out as a uh, I only started beat making because I couldn't find cats to, to vibe with me to do the kind of beats I wanted to spit over. Yeah, And now that's kind of taking that over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I've been dealing with my live case and I feel like I'm about to become sampler man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the S on the chest. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Sampler man with the S on the chest. <laughs> Straight up, man. So I got this um, Reflex Live Loop by SDS Digital, and then that's sitting next to Morphogene, and then uh, D Still was just telling me, you know, I, I sat last night, and for all that I love about both of those modules, there's stuff that I want that uh, it just feels like uh, I'm not getting out of these. And I know part of it is that I'm still learning the Reflex Live Loop. And uh <clears throat> So I started making this list, and then I was almost like, I might need to make what I want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For real. yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of battling with that stuff. And then Aaron was like, well, yo, what about the uh, Procussa Micro SSP? Percussa Micro SSP. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so I pulled it up, and I was like, word. Yeah, because you know we're going to be doing this Synthplex thing, the mod bat panel at the Synthplex joint in Burbank uh, next month. And uh, apparently, Aaron, you said they're going to have, they're going to debut on there? Or no, they, well, they said on on the site, they said they're going to be up there with batches and to mm -hmm. have your money. So that's, 
that's the um that's the mode I saw. So I was like, okay, I'll have my money in those joints go for like five hundred bucks. I saw them for like five twenty around yeah, five twenty six hundred. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm only comparing it to the big percussor because the, the huge one. Yeah, it's like eight thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I yeah, it's, it's, it's two grand. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's two thousand dollars, yo. Yeah, it's like two thousand plus some add-ons or something. Mm -hmm. It's really weird, and I was like, eh, no, nah, I'm not really down with that because you know the ER three hundred one was nine hundred. So, um, at the price point of about five fifty, I think you said still, it's, it, it sounds pretty good for what it can do, and it has a pretty fast processor in it as well. Yeah, but here's what I'm surprised at. When I looked it up, I didn't realize this. And that I don't know if this stops me from wanting one, but uh, uh, Aaron, can you turn your volume up a little bit? Or if not, I'll turn you up. But give me a second. I, can you turn it up? I'm on my yeah, I'll turn it up. I'll turn it up. Uh, but yeah, so the the uh, if y'all look up sharing on the screen, the Percussive Micro Super Signal Processor Eurac Module, all in words. Come on, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so whatever it is, five hundred or so dollars. But it didn't get funded. I didn't realize that it didn't get funded on Kickstarter. The goal a was one hundred and three thousand, and it got funded at the sixty-four thousand. I mean, yeah, a hundred. What did it say? Like one hundred twenty thousand dollars was the goal. One hundred twenty thousand dollars. They should have been a little more conservative. Like, because I mean, if you think about it. They got sixty thousand dollars. That should have been able to do a short run of them joints, especially if you already got backers. That's a hundred and nine backers that would have got. You know what I mean? You would have been able to make a, a nice run. I saw different numbers than what you're looking at. Really? I, I saw a funded project um, when I looked it up. Is oh, this an really? older failed one or something? Or is this not real? Well, the one that dropped, um, it dropped like on, I want to say either around Christmas time or around November is when the link dropped to try and get on the micro percussive. And then um, when I looked at it, I looked at it up um, maybe like a couple weeks ago, and it looked it looked legit. I thought it was one hundred and twenty thousand dollars that they got, and then and um, they only needed like fifty thousand. Okay, so well, I'll tell you this: the project's funding goal was not reached on Sunday, December twenty third, uh, twenty eighteen, eight a.m. That's when it closed. So maybe they had a second one after that. I yeah, know. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm coming with that fake news, but it said on the site. <laughs> no, I'm coming with the fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it, said, it, said, it said on the site, "Yo, Percuss is gonna be up there, and they're gonna be they're gonna be um, bringing joints." So I was like, "Whoa, really?" So here's the interesting thing. I'm, I look at the first Percussor joint, and uh, hold on, let me let me share that. Yo, that joint is huge. It it's is huge. Way too big, man. So look at this though. So you, you got uh, it says that they had fifty-one backers that pledged sixty-two thousand dollars. So this one was successfully funded at sixty-two thousand dollars, but the other one got sixty-four thousand dollars. But the goal was twice as much. So their goal here was twenty thousand dollar goal, and they got sixty-two thousand dollars. But which for the is, micro one, they had a goal of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and they got sixty-four thousand dollars. It's like they overshot. Yeah, which which is weird about that because it's like why so you you had to do the bulk of the engineering on the, the larger module because that was the first one so you had to come up with the operating system this that and a third and it's like why wouldn't you have had the lower goal be for the smaller module that is derivative of that? Yep, yep. You're I right. had to ask Bert about that. I I did have Bert on my show uh from from Percussa. I had him on my show uh. A couple months back, uh, a few months back, it was a while ago. Um, but I mean, yeah, it looks like a great module, and that that smaller SSP module looks really dope too. But I was surprised when I heard that it wasn't funded. I was really surprised by that. Yeah, that's surprising. So, so yeah, Shiro, I may need to tap your brain a little bit. Actually, last night I was able oh, to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Last night I actually kind of made some headway though. It's not it's not like it's the uh honestly, it's not the most difficult thing. I think I just there's some things about the you know, there's a couple of small buttons on there that you gotta do weird things yeah. with and they're kind of cramped in there around the <laughs> yeah. like I, I find myself pressing the button and having to look behind another knob for what mode it's in and uh, it's just kind of kind of strange, but the functionality of it being simplified with just like, yo, take a sample, 
slice it, trigger it. You know what I'm saying? So I was doing that last night and I, I think I'm good. It's just a matter of kind of getting used to the way it works and the repetition. So I get quick yeah. with it. You know what I mean? It's not a not a not a bad module. And it does something very different than like morphogene. You know what I mean? At least the way I use the two of them are very different. Uh yeah, they so. don't they don't step on each other's toes at all. No, nah, not at all. We're just like straight up, you know, sampling and like chopping stuff. It's it's perfect for that. That's actually yeah. that's actually why I want one of them joints because man, when I look at morphogene, even when I use my nebula, I gotta use it in this, as a sampler in a different way. Either I'm cutting loops with it or I'm being granular with it, but I'm not <laughs> slicing things when yeah. it comes to those samplers. And that's what kind of stopped me from getting the morphogene. I'm like, man, I don't really see cats slicing up fragments with this. They are in like the granular sense, but I don't see like segmented section like, oh, mm -hmm. stuff happening, uh, which is kind of what I want. Um, wh what's a solution for that? Like, what can you got? I know I have the ER301 and that's what I use that for. I, just, I honestly feel like what I'd like to see, what Ken, I'd like. I can't hear you too much. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't hear you either, Ken. Uh, right. But I think you mentioned something earlier today, like when we have a, I feel like Marco Polo is like, the daily private beat people podcast, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I feel like what you were mentioning earlier is like when I start talking about the stuff I want, I think you're right. What I'm looking for is maybe like a much more simplified ER301. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to have a screen, be able to see uh, what I'm doing because I'm just used to that visual feedback nowadays. And, you know, I'm, I'd like a simplified and almost not per function or either soft buttons next to a screen. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like the way you have on the, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So just to kind of keep it simple, I'd like to go into a record mode and be able to record and go into an edit mode and be able to edit and go into a play mode and have everything that I need there. But it doesn't need to be all uh, crazy, button presses. Hold up, you, you got all your slices, now you gotta hold this button for uh, uh, four or five seconds to remove the slices or whatever the case is. Well, that's more for talk right there. Yeah, it's, it's kind of... I, I can't with that, yo. I can't. To me, that's yeah. like, yeah, I might as well go get a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't, I can't, yo, because it's like, Man, I'm trying to slice up this aim, this you know, funky drummer break. I want the kick, I want the snare, I want, you know, more Virginia. This is gonna take three hours. What's that, Ken? What yeah. you doing? Oh, my bad. What? Can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it get attention? Okay, like, man, what you got to say about this? <laughs> I, I got, you know, I'm having audio issues over here. I I a light skin dude. Yeah, a light skin dude. I always run up in here, act a fool, man. <laughs> Listen, man. I didn't like. I'm having issues with my audio over here, so I didn't realize what was. No, it, it goes. It goes deeper than the audio. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> Uh, oh, that, that was actually my phone and gene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Distracted. We was talking about the, the morphogene and stuff, and he's like, ah, I got a phone and gene. Let's see what's up with that. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna I was I was gonna show something, but I wasn't intending to send it to you. Was, oh, uh, you killing me, man. I that button pressed in my bad. Um but, yeah. yeah, I was uh I was gonna say as far as slicing, you can slice on it really quickly, um, but it's editing the position of those slices and being more fine with it after the fact. It, that's the harder part. Yeah, I, I want I want the kind of precision. Well, here's the thing. I think Reflex Live Loop does have that precision. You can get the chops and boom, boom, boom. Yeah, but just press the button. Yeah, you could just press the button and hit it, and you and you got it. And I see. But you know what the problem is? Is like it's um, it's taking me a minute to get used to what mode you need to be in to do that. Well, um, did you see I think it's, um, um, RP mode? If I remember right. So, so you go to the RP mode, you got to hit the slice can... button, or the, the little black button above slice, and when the slice uh, LED is yeah. on, then you can go ahead. Oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <clears throat> it's it's just, I'm getting used to that, I guess. What I was saying is, is that on the 301, I don't know if you guys can hear me any better now. I'm yeah, we can to... hear you. We can hear yeah. you. Is it better now? Yeah. yeah. I'm having issues. I think the dust in this in this 
uh, temporary setup is starting to affect my mixer. You, you do seem thing. kind of dusted. Yeah, you, you well, you, hey, now. So what I was saying, though, is that, uh, yeah, I've been using the 301 for modular slicing. I'm still a big proponent of, like, if you want to do traditional slicing, use an MPC, use a machine, you know, use something traditional because that's exactly what you wanted to do. So do that. But for things that are, you know, outside of that box, um, slicing slicing loops and then mangling them with modular ER301 all the way. And yeah. I've talked to people who have, you know, the, the Percussa and have the 301 and have multiple other things that can do that. And everybody seems to be on the same page that the 301 is by far the most intuitive when it comes to that kind of thing. And the workflow on that thing with, with the way the screens are. I've been slicing samples up on it, rearranging them, and then grain stretching them and breaking them and doing this and doing that, um, you know, pretty heavily lately. And it works exactly how I would want it to, you know? Yeah, I, I could I could attest to that because um, I was telling Ken, I was like, man, I want to build a dope ass drum machine um, without having to buy all these drum voices. Man, my 301, just one track is one of the dopest drum machines I've ever had. Yeah, that's it's because I can throw any of my samples in one track and trigger them with gates and have ADSR for them, uh, filters for each voice. Strange timing. Certain, strange timing. I can put uh, micro delays in between everything and have things like just be weird. And I have a lot of fun with that. Um, and that's just one track of the 301. Track two, I could be chopping up a sample. You See, that, that's the problem. I feel like what this is really leading me to is an ER301, but I, I honestly, I just don't want to go down that road because I feel like I'll end yes, up being distracted. Yes, I know. You do. Yes, you do. Well, well the here, thing, here's the thing oh. that I keep saying is that, Corey, if I were you, I would just not rush because if you feel like, okay, well, I don't necessarily want to get tied down by this, you know, this and that of building things. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that thing's still only at 0 0.4 firmware. Like it's still considered beta, yeah. even though, even though it's been in people's hands for over a year now, he, when he released it, he said straight up, look, this is beta. Like this is not, you know, it's not done yet. And when it does get finished, like it, you can go onto his forum and you can see that he's very, very active. When that stuff does finish, he's going to have, way more built-in modules he it's going to be open to third party developers to be adding way more things to it so well, the people who don't necessarily want to build you're going to be able to just go through a library of things and boom it's going to work for you you know yeah, Whereas man. right now it's more about the builders and the people who are wanting to be on that bleeding edge that makes sense that that does make sense first um, of all i ain't never trying to be on no bleeding edge but <laughs> bleeding. I think yeah. you're. I think you're lying. I, I've seen your workflow. I've seen a lot of things that you do, and and you're full of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, Ken, I'm just saying, like, yo, ER301 to me is a module that I'm going to be stuck in for years. It seems like that kind of a module, like mm -hmm. just just, when, that. just when you think, it's open ended. Yeah, yeah, just when you think you can't do it you can't do something he comes up with an update oh yo now there's choke groups oh yo now there's this now there's this and it's like oh man this is amazing you know so that's kind of why of times when you think you can't do something oftentimes it's just because you're not thinking deep enough <laughs> yeah, yeah and all you have to do is watch a neil partridge video and he already did a video on it and, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah man it's kind of crazy but me me being a guy that can you remember when i took the plunge ER301 was the first module that I bought. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah was it really? Yeah. Yeah, it was the first one that he bought. Yeah, see, so, you so don't, come at, don't come out your neck saying, oh, I don't, I'm not going to be on a bleeding edge. Man, fool. No, when I say bleeding <laughs> edge, I, mean, I, mean, like, hey, I don't like bleeding and I don't like edges. I'm just <laughs> letting you know that I don't suffer fools. Don't come at look, me. <laughs> look, 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 man. Um, When I bought the ER301, I said to myself, I'm going to get one module that can be 20 modules. And not only that, but the thing is, is like the disting can be 20 modules. And I've yeah, had that joint, yeah, nah, and but that this thing, thing is, it, it's an intuitive factor to it. You know Yo, what I mean? Disting is like a hot chick with no legs. 
Damn. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it's it, like it, you, you like you could take her out, but it's gonna take a long time to get to where you're trying to go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's a hell of an analogy. <laughs> I know I'm weird. I'm sorry. That's wild. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> someone is very mad at you now. I don't care. Oh, man. <laughs> the that's level of me too right? just rolls up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, I can't hear you, man. Like, <laughs> yo, Aaron, you're like you your horrible. What? Uh, <laughs> and you got reverb on it. Hold on, I'm, I try to turn it up. Yo, yo, can you turn me up? Yeah, turn I got you all up. the way up now. Turn my mic up. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I got shot nine times. Um. But yeah, um, I was I was gonna talk about the um, ER three hundred one and like, yo, dude, if you're not ready for it, then then I say just kind of keep exploring all those other options, cause yeah, it's and it's kind of distracting, and that's why I took a break from it for a while. <laughs> yo, Ken is like scoring the, the podcast. What is happening over there at Ken's spot, yo? I, I accidentally touched a key and I had a sequence on it, man. Like, well, <laughs> I made the mistake of like I, I've been creating a, another bank of presets on the Matrix, and I made a mistake of the very first preset is a sequence. So, like, whenever it loads up, if you touch it, a sequence plays. And yeah, I'm finding out that that was a bad idea. I need to I need to save that with the sequence off. Oh, so so. Okay, let, let's switch gears because he's talking about a uh, full size synthesizer, and it just makes me think. Finally, I'm not the only one that's played the Moog One, and I want to jump over to D still. Talk about that, man. Man, I fell in love, man. Yeah. I, uh, I fell in love with the Moog One, man. Let me tell you. So I got I got the opportunity to uh, go out to this place called Third uh, Th uh, Third Wave Music here in Jersey. It's basically like they have every synthesizer ever made, basically. Um, and, you know, I spent a couple hours there, but they had two Moog Ones just chilling out. And it was cool. They had two Moog Ones, and they also had um, Memory Moog right next to it. Oh, dope. So I was yeah, because it's the same size and format and everything. But, you know, did you play them? Because they sound drastically different. Exactly. There. That's what I'm saying. I was able to sit and play them both. Mm -hmm. and really like tweak the filters and mess with the voices. And I gotta tell you, man, the Moog one is the most vintage modern sounding synth mm -hmm. um, that I've heard so far. Polyphonic, I'm not saying, you know, it's the also the fact that I can play chords and play music on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very inspiring because, you know, most synths are monophonic. And you know, and that's frustrating sometimes. To be able to sit and play the Moog one, it was really um, eye-opening for me and inspired me instantaneously. Now, was also, it an eight voice or sixteen? Bro, I was playing the eight voice, mm -hmm. and that was enough. But I'll tell you what: after doing some more research and us talking about it, I think I'm gonna just do the sixteen because I don't want to be that dude that has the eight, and then Ken comes over my house and he's like, "Oh, you got the mug one, but you got the eight, though." Yeah. So, because, yeah. So I'm. Just yeah, but he's forgetting that I'm gonna come over and then I'm gonna clown him and be like, "You spent that much on that sin." Yeah, man. <laughs> no, nah, but it's all, no. I, I'm really, I'm really excited to get one. Um, it's gonna take me, take me a minute, but. Yeah, I gotta get it, and I'm, I'm going back and forth between the eight and the sixteen. Not the one thing that's I said about 16s, we, we MCs, we gotta do sixteens. We don't do eight. Yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I'm stuck on it on on an eight voice right now, but it's not. I'm still stuck on the uh, the mindset of the quantum. Um, that's that's what's got my mind for a while now. Is the so, quantum eight voices? Those yeah, more. It's eight. Okay. And yeah, it's it's it still has me. I mean, with that recent update that they did, I mean, it's got me really intrigued because it it's just, to me, it seems pretty forward thinking. I have minor gripes about it, but um, man, I, 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 yeah, I want one bad, but I got to finish the studio first. Like, I, I'm going to put up some walls before I do anything. Where are you going to put it, man? You're going to need a whole nother 
keyboard stand. Oh, you no, need, no. You know the, what you the, need? The you studio. need a Jasper, yo. I was actually, um, well, no, I was talking to the wife because I probably will have a Jasper set up, but I was talking to the wife about it the other day. And so I'm in the in the new studio, which is just outside this room. Um, We were talking about doing slat walls. But yeah, one of the things that worried me is that it, I don't want the slat walls to resonate and, and cause any kind of noise. So I, I found a way to um, basically do slat walls that are quieter. Um, Cause I, I don't, I, and I don't want it to be like the particle board style stuff either. So is there a different way to mount the, the slat walls in order to get them not to vibrate? I'm going to be doing, um, so I'm going to do layers of what's called mass loaded vinyl. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to do layers of mass loaded vinyl between each, each setup on it. And, um, keep it dead that way but the other thing that i was worried about like i have a buddy of mine who has a slat wall in his studio and he had some pretty pretty significant synths on there like like weight wise and i man i just think about it i'm like i'd be so scared to put really heavy synths on a slat wall like that scares the hell out of me so when you go to when you go to um perfect circuit they have uh slat walls and all of their synths are up there but they're metal and gray the gray some sort of gray metal and they seem pretty sturdy but they have everything up there from model d's to yeah. uh uh this joint the matrix brute all kinds of and any dsi synth and anything in between i was looking at all possibly doing metal and then spraying it you can get like a it's almost like rhino liner um, and then spraying the backside of them because, like, I just the metal ones look really cool. I'm just worried that they'll resonate inside the studio, yeah. and I, I don't want any kind of weird resonations happening inside inside the lab. So, yeah, that makes sense, huh? Uh, uh, uh there was uh, how to kill a conversation 101. Talk about no, no, no. Actually, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> Masada brought up the Behringer RD 808. Um, so yeah, Ken, tell us about the what your what your thoughts are on the RD eight oh eight so far. I know you're one of only two, maybe at most a couple of a few people that have one. <clears throat> Sorry, I had myself muted. Uh what's a RD eight oh eight? Um what's a RD no. Bro, get out of here. That's not the thing you've been talking to us every five minutes. <laughs> 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 and um, everybody know you got it. You've already done videos. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, um, this, this thing right here. Yeah. So it's um, it's fun. I like it a lot. Uh, what I will say about it, um, this is a really early prototype. So that's like I always have to say that stuff right out the gate because, um, just like Nam, like I saw um, what's his name, Noir. Uh, I, I saw his video about the micro freak and my first impression of that was like, okay, well you were at Nam looking at very early prototypes right. and then complaining about like, you know, how, how a touch plate is going to feel. And I'm like, yeah, well, but his, his joint was unfair. Cause I'm like, bro, you play, but that's what I'm saying is that's not a keyboard. That's a touch plate surface. Yeah. And, yeah. and not only that, you're also dealing with something that at the time I know for a fact that that thing was at point point six firmware. Like, you know what I mean? Like, or actually 0 0.6 firmware. Um, so um, point being is, is like, you know, with early prototypes, there's, there's going to be things that can change. So I always try to tell people like, look, things might get altered. Things might change around a little bit. Don't like go full internet troll right away. Um, if you notice, like, for instance, tuning is different, you know, on, on something, you know, um, with the current, um, with the current RD 808, uh, what, What's cool is that Behringer is like totally cool with me talking about prototypes. Like they don't care if, if I talk about stuff crazy early. Most companies do not do that. Most companies are like, you shut your damn mouth. Don't talk about it until it's out. Right. Um, Behringer so, is definitely non-conventional that way. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> they're okay to let me kind of, um, you know, speak about some of the quirks. And one of the quirks that, that I noticed is, for instance, the bass drum. Uh, let me move my camera. Hold on. I'm going to show you this. So, see if you guys can see this at all. I probably need to shine some more light too. Hold on. Okay. So, uh, let me see where I'm at. Okay. So, if you see the orange dot above the tuning, see that orange dot? Right. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it has that orange dot in specific places. Now, the original did as well. The original had the orange dot up here for the levels and whatnot. And that's supposed to be like your... your Overdrive. Well, that's supposed to be like your set level and whatnot. But um, so on the knobs that it doesn't have... Or that it has a dot there that maybe that knob didn't exist before. Like, for instance, um, on an original 808, you can't tune that kick like that, you know? Um, you would think that the orange dot would be exactly where original tuning is on this prototype it's not like if you'll notice right now i have the knob you know at about nine o'clock that seems to be pretty much dead on to what the original 808's tuning kick is right um now that may change who knows like when when this comes out they may you know that's simple as just doing a different uh silk screen on it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um there's there's some little quirks like that where i'm checking things out uh they just had a firmware update for it so i'm getting to know things like the step repeat and note repeat you know the sequencer in this is totally different from the original 808 you have uh you have steps just like you know a vintage 808 would have um but you don't have the pattern a pattern a b pattern b switch um Instead, it's more like a, a traditional modern sequencer where you, you know, you can chain sequences. So you can chain like, I think it's 64 sequences together to make full songs, Dope. do all that kind of stuff. Um, but along with that, you can do things like you can motion record um, the wave designer and the, um, or the, the cutoff and resonance stuff. So you can record the, these functions up here. Obviously, you're not going to be able to record these because these are all analog pots. Like, you know, none of the analog stuff has been changed. You know, like that's they're all the original circuits for the most part. Um, there's some very, very minor differences. Like uh, I want to say the hand clap is um, a DCO because it's a little bit more stable than the original. Like they're able to get, you know, and, and to that same point, um, when you listen to the hand clap on this versus something like the Miami, uh, I think it sounds closer to the original. So, um, you know, the, the minor changes that they've made to circuits, in my opinion, actually make it sound better, like make it sound closer to the original, not further away. Because if you listen to the Miami or the Yocto, they, both of those two have like their own slight differences from the original 808 um and i would say by and large they, they tend to be a little bit brighter and slightly harsher um you, you, you know another thing that's dope about this joint is that um the size the form factor i see you have it sitting right next to the mpc live yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's uh it's a little bigger than the mpc live and i kind of dig that as a form factor for 808 because everything has been moving in the micro mini direction it seems in in modern times and i like that they decided to go that size with it it's not as big as the original but it's definitely not as small as you know what things would typically be now like the uh the aura joints um yeah so as far as the size it's i i'd be perfectly honest with you it's stupid fun to play like yeah. it's just really really it's just like it feels fun. like an instrument for you yeah, like, like, because of the form factor, like, it takes up more space on your desk, you know, so so some people are not going to like that. And that's totally fine, too. Like, I, I under I get that as well. But when it comes down to like, if you're just like, rocking a beat, and you're kind of just jamming in your lab, and you're grabbing knobs and moving things and doing steps. Um, one one really cool quirk about it. This is driving me nuts. I'm sorry. Uh, Ken is all over the place today. This is crazy. <laughs> it's because I'm drinking coffee, man. Like, Yo, going Bo Beats hold on, hold on. Yo, hold we on. Can't, we, it gets me hyped. We can't see it right now, but Ken got roller skates on. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I, I, I had He's my skateboard out. That, that perpetual uh, uh, Spike Lee shot where he's floating around the room. <laughs> 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 so one thing I wanted to mention since we're talking about that stuff, it was in the news not long ago that. Uh, Roland recently filed design yeah. marks for its TB303 or TR808 recently. Well, hold just on. Let me, let me touch on that real quick. Uh, like, because because that goes into what I was just getting ready to say. Is um, So 
the step sequencing on this being different, one thing that's really cool about it is it has this kind of performance aspect <clears throat> where notes don't get um, solidly put into the sequence, meaning they don't stay there un unless you hit record. So you can add notes into the step sequence, right, by pressing mm -hmm. them. And it will play them one time through, and then the next time through, it'll erase them. Like, they won't be there unless you have it in record mode. So, like, if you're freaking a beat live and you just want a variation just for this one bar setup or whatever, you know, you can do that. And that all kind of ties into the fact that, like, there's aspects that they changed on this thing. So it's not like that whole trademark thing. I don't think is going to hit them really at all. Like, you know, yeah, actually, I don't I don't think it'll it'll hit them because it's not the same form factor. They they design form factor. I think there's enough different about any of the clones, firstly, because they're not the same size. Uh, and and and, you know, this one has other stuff on it that the original didn't have. I just kind of think that's it's, it's just funny that Roland wants to. Hey, it's. It's their product, right? They, but I, I figured they should have done that then, or they had thirty years to do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, 30 years, forty years. Like they had, like, well, how long has it been? Just from two thousand and twenty years. So when you go back to the nineties, that's thirty years. You go back into the eighties, that's forty years. They had forty years to do this thing, and and so it's just kind of strange that they decided now because everybody, you know, I think it's because Baron just putting a hurting on them. And um, I don't think it's going to make no difference. Like, and then two, hey, Baron just doing stuff with, with that. Uh, you got somebody doing a clone of y'all favorite stuff and y'all didn't do it. And the public been asking Roland to reissue them joints forever. That when they did, they did something that's cool, but they didn't do what people were asking for. And <laughs> The people that I'm questioning that will actually be hit about this is Dinsync with the uh with the RE 303 yeah. because mm -hmm. his 303 is literally like he he copied it's a the clone. board like yeah. it's an yeah. actual it's not a clone it's a straight up copy like it is a <laughs> you know what I mean so I'm wondering about about that you know so that that that's going to be interesting how that affects it and I've seen you know. You know, if if you if you got a keen eye and, and look in some of the pictures that you've seen it at the the pre Nam event or whatever, I mean, you can see their silver boxes, you know, that they've had that were on the table. So, mm -hmm. you know, Behringer tends to change things like just enough. And, and for instance, on the eight oh eight, the color scheme is reversed. You know, so mm -hmm. like your your uh, steps uh, one two three four would be red. And then it goes to orange, and then it goes to yellow, then to white. It's the exact opposite on, on the RD808. So right. um, they trademarked that color scheme, and they were, they were putting that on, what, like Puma shoes? and Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? So so Hey, I wanted to like those Pumas, but they are ugly, though. I like the black ones. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel one way or the other about them because my shoes, I, my shoes tend to stay dirty. And yeah, but Corey, you, know. you got them. You, you, you already know we clown you on your shoes, so you can't talk. I'm a what? What is it? We be, me and Ken be clowning you on your shoes. Oh, my shoe, shoe situation. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, you gotta do how you gotta do. I um, huh? I thought those were Adidas. Nah, those nah, 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 they're Pumas. Oh, okay. They got yeah. they got Adidas ones also though. Oh, do they? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh, no. You make that money. I'd get those, though. They do stripes. Hey, yo, Aaron, yeah. you, got any, you got any Mike Prees in the crib? Mike Prees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I usually have the, the, um, the mic, um, like the earphone mic, dude. I can't find it, man. It's That's all, all good. You, you're closer yeah. to the thing now. So actually, you sound better now than you did before. <laughs> all good. Hey, she wrote. So how's it? How's your how's your setup working out, man? With the uh, I love what you're doing. And I think last time you was on, maybe we talked about this, but I love that you got the Digitone and Digitac with your Euro Rack joint. Uh, how's that setup coming along for you? I, I feel like you get mad comfortable with it. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I've been spending a lot of time with it, and um, that's definitely gonna be my live setup for probably for the rest of this year. Yo, I'm gonna focus on that, and um, pretty much I got everything that I need at my disposal with with um. Those two boxes and a six U, like I'm good. Word, that's dope. So that's what I'm trying to get to, bro. With 
with my six uh, U over here. But what do you have? A one hundred four HP or eighty four HP or what? A one hundred four. One hundred four. So, so we're working with the same amount of space. And what I'm doing is I, I got the mutant brain here, and that's basically my bridge for the yeah. force. You know what I'm saying? So like throwing that one MIDI out into the mutant brain and then getting all those gates and, you know, the four CV is actually really yeah. dope because then you got a situation where you launching clips of CV if you want. Yeah. To. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You, know, you can set it up to do uh, clock division and clock multiplication also. Oh, the mutant brain? No, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. Just It's just like a, a app that you use on the website. Okay. Just look pull down menu. Yeah, you could set up um, clock dividers and clock multipliers on. That's dope. I'm gonna have to pull that up so I'll remember for later. Yeah. So yeah, I'm having fun, man, with like a cut, a short, like sort of like a cut down system, and being able to have some connectivity between the force and this six U. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blam it. And we were talking about samplers earlier. One of the things I want to <laughs> be able to do is uh, is go between. You know what I mean? I always think about this situation of being able to keep the groove going while you so get like some transition. Other stuff. yeah so i want to be yeah. able to do like my full get down <laughs> on my euro rack while i'm doing other stuff here and be able to kind of go back and forth so that's kind of where i'm at what you pull up ken what you got this is Pardon. the uh this is the mutant brain editor yeah there you go so yeah. if you go on to mutant brain surgery dot hex inverter dot net this is where you go to uh, get your freak on with this thing. Dope. And, uh, yeah, it gives you basically every option you could want. Um, yeah, so, you, and you just go and set it up how you want it. And then uh, when you're done, I think it sends like a 6X file. Yeah, yeah, a 6X yeah. File yeah you see 6X. It like two yeah. Yep. So cool. at the, when you're done, you just hit the button and you're good to go. Yeah. Pretty dope. Okay. With a uh, okay, cool. I'm gonna do that. I'm pulling it up now just so I have it for later. Although it kept wanting to take me to actual brain surgery websites, but <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yo, <laughs> can you hear me better now? Yeah, yeah, I better yeah. Now. yeah I, I found the joint, man. <laughs> man. That's what's up. Found a joint. So, so yo, uh, uh, man, I, I got to tell you, I wish Lee was here because Lee had me rolling in text, man, <laughs> about about this joint. Op one. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> oh cool. you got it. Yeah. So, so how did this get to be so newsworthy and chatter chatter worthy after all these years of it being out? Um, yeah, because people don't like paying for stuff, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, not only that, but you know, so it's such a unique situation. What what were they when they came out? Seven ninety nine. I think yeah. they seven ninety nine. Then at some point, it's like they went up a hundred dollars every couple of years. It seemed like, <laughs> or or maybe it was seven ninety nine for a long, long time. And then uh, I noticed that it got up to. Eight ninety nine, and then just before it went out of stock for a year, it was at nine ninety nine. I got my joint. For, I got my joint for nine hundred. Right, so there you go. So it was like eight ninety nine for a long time, and then it went out of stock for a year. Now that it's come back, it's twelve ninety nine. Yo, <laughs> twelve ninety nine. Wow. So I got some thoughts about that though. What, what's up, D? What are you saying? No, I'm saying to me that's still not that. Much of a so that that's kind of what my thoughts are. My thoughts are still, you, you know, I get why people are like, "Holy crap, twelve ninety nine for that!" But when I think about it, if they if this was from what I hear, it's uh, originally a, a cell phone screen, right? And mm -hmm. when they sourced it and made the thing, the cell phone screen was probably readily available. Whoever was making them, manufacturing them, you know, any parts that's made for a cell phone is probably just an abundance of this stuff mm -hmm. out there, you know what I mean, being made. But if they stop making it and you've spec your whole device around that screen, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then it's out of stock for a year. I'm imagining a scenario where they had to go and be like, yo, we got to get somebody to go and make this thing for us. And we got all the specs. But uh, so so then if they had to go get it made, they obviously couldn't do the type of volume that it would have taken to keep that price low. 
when they made them for cell phones. You know what I mean? That's no, just what I'm assuming. Not, I don't think it's it's likely that it would be like that. So anyway, uh, now well, that I they got them, and they're twelve hundred dollars because they probably had to pay a premium. But I also think that they bump, bumped up the price a little bit too because of the euphoria and sort of stuff that was surrounding it on the aftermarket. Yeah, I, but absolutely. it also might just be it also might just be costing them more to make it now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. so yeah. so basically, if you're sourcing this from a company that makes it for cell phones, there's probably hundreds of thousands that they're making at a given time. But you know probably, what I'm saying? But when you when they stop making it and then you say, like, hey, I need this made, I need to commission somebody to make a screen to this spec. Now where is those probably hmm? yeah, you can't do that volume. At but it's probably point. also not just a screen, too, um, Corey. It's yeah, probably, it's probably like, other you know, components probably in there. Screen. Like, for instance, I think they, they say that those buttons are like airplane grade, right? Grade uh, buttons that are on it. So it's like <laughs> maybe, maybe <there's> some, <laughs> some... <laughs> he's yeah, like, you know how wild, it's you know ridiculous. How wild, <laughs> yeah, you know how wild that sounds like. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because everybody always says that stuff like space age, space green. I'm just well, saying, I don't know. I'm sure it's made by those NASA. buttons are literally made from dead alien fingernail tips. <laughs> <laughs> They're very rare. Yeah, no, my, my, whole, rare. my whole thing is my whole thing is you see Weezy coming over here, he's trying to see what's up. Um Yo, I just don't know how much it costs them to make, and I don't think they'll divulge that information. So it's no, like they won't. it has to be something. It has to be something on their part. The same way, like you know, other companies put out some new things. At all version two costs more because it had it cost them more to make it. So I'm yeah, sorry. well, I think that's exactly what the situation is. It costs more to make this, and and but you know what I think. So when you when you face with something like that, I think the smart move for a company like this, even if they are filling in the supply and demand of like, yo, it's been out of stock for a year. I think what, what I would have done if I was in their shoes is say like, okay, let's take all of the feedback that we've gotten over the years and let's do an MK2. Let's do a op exactly. two. You know what I'm that's, saying? That's what I was going to say. Exactly. Exactly. The, que the question here is, um, so they did this and they, they said in the, in the post about it, when they did it, they said, we had a choice to make, you know, do we, you know, do we let it fade away or do we do this? And it's like, well, were you guys not planning to release a successor to this thing eventually I I anyway? I like, might what? have not. Yeah, might well, have. that's what I'm saying. And if they hadn't, that's just, in my in my personal experience, that's just bad business planning. Like, mm -hmm. what were you thinking? Because now you've got a thing where you went ahead and did this. You say you're doing it to go ahead and, and keep this synth alive, whatever, which is one cool idea, whatever. But at the same time, you know, it, I don't think you can debate the fact that it did sow a lot of negative feedback from the community, whether it's oh, yeah, big time. or not. You can you can. You can debate on, but you can't debate on the fact that there is that negative sentiment going around right now, and it's all over social media. It's all over mm -hmm. YouTube right now. People are talking yeah, about that. Social media is not real life, though. Yeah, that's at, not. At the end of the day, they could have they could have done something base. like an MK2 Opinion. and had backwards compatible updates for the, for the original owners. You know? What yeah, I mean? but like, but peep this though. Like, as long as you have relevant features, like how much do you really need an MK2? Like Electron didn't make it, they made an MK2, but it was just like hardware upgrades for their Octatrack. You know what I mean? And those were hard grade, um, hardware upgrades for like their, you know, with the mono machine and all those other things. You only need an MK2 as far as like redesigning the whole thing when your joint is completely irrelevant. Now, I don't know about completely irrelevant though, because I know that there's a lot of feedback online about things that people wish it could do or would want it to do and and feature requests and stuff. But and that's so, a software thing, right? Yeah, know. that's a software thing though. I don't know, is it? Well, how how do, <laughs> you, know how do you how do you how are you enjoying it right now? Like um you just picked it up. You just came in the mail, right? Um Corey? Yeah, I got it. I got it like 2 weeks ago now. 2 yeah. weeks ago. How are you feeling it? Like does it feel like a $1300 machine? No. What is it but, but but I didn't pay that for it either. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know right, what, right. I mean? what, what, what kind of what does it feel like? Does it feel like a a six hundred dollar machine? I feel or? like the original price is justifiable. I, really? I do. I feel really? like I feel like seven ninety nine is good. Even eight ninety nine uh, is good. I guess maybe because of the thing is it it does so much in such a small form factor, and I travel a lot. Okay. Also, 
also, Corey, you have a lot of stuff. Yeah. To compare that to. So, so yeah. So I do have a lot of stuff to compare it to. And then on top of that, it's like it wouldn't be my only thing. Maybe my opinion would be different if it was my only thing. Yeah, right? like I know cats that use the OP1 and that's their only thing. Right. Like yeah. they make music on that and that's it. Mm -hmm. So they, they're like either I get a laptop or I get an OP1. Right. right. So and mm. if, uh, somebody just mentioned the OPZ. Yo, the OPZ is a, to me is a more advanced sequencer. Mm -hmm. It has a lot more robust features. <laughs> Yeah. It has CV stuff now. It has a has a bunch of things, and it's six ninety nine or, yeah. or five ninety. I don't even know how much it is, but it's not made out of metal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's smaller. It's no, no screen. No screen. No screen but yeah. they're utilizing the fact that everybody has a phone in their pocket and an iPad or one of these things. You know what I'm saying? To they're, they're cutting the cost down, and they prove that yo by us taking away these things. We're cutting the cost down, but actually giving you more features as far as like how you sequence. So, because the OP1, you got that tape style recording of everything. Um, you have the endless sequencer. I mean, I love the OP1, but at the same time, when I would look at the OP1 versus my iPad, I'm like, eh, I think I'm going to go with the iPad because I have an unlimited, like, kind of source of inspiration with my iPad because it's just more that i can do and i think that's what they're doing with the opz the opz it seems like like why didn't they do the opz like and and like use the features of the opz and add it to the op1 and like make that could have been the mk2 yeah i think been. software i think software wise they might not have been able to do it and maybe the chip yeah. that they're using in it they just can't do it True. and maybe the op but OP, that's the whole thing know, about designing a new thing though right when you design yeah, but a maybe, new but, thing you can make remember, it all a lot of companies do uh a, a interim product, something yeah, that's, in the that's middle true. that's, that's helping true. them to test certain concepts, and they're testing ideas mm -hmm. with this one. Like the pocket operators was them testing out a new sequencer. I feel like the Digitech is that. I feel like the Digitech is exactly. basically the interim product to a a, a new Octatrack. I yeah. feel like the the uh, yeah, yeah. the MPC Touch was that it was an interim product to the MPC Live, bro. Don't nobody talk about the MPC Touch, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they needed to do that in order to study how to do touch interfaces, how to yep. create something all in one, so that they can do the MPC Live. And I feel like that's just R and D. That's just development, man. Like you, you have to put out stuff that is testing the water you have to take risks and i know people don't like it when people pay, take risks because they're paying for stuff but i'm like yo how else are we going to get innovation how else are we going to try true so well, like, somebody okay. said something like, interesting tomcat, like i can't believe that akai put out tomcat and freaking Riverboat. <laughs> but yeah, you figured that was going to be something on the way to oh, something man. else yeah but so so they're trying things to see like what what direction development can go. In like, truth, some things fail. In in truth, that was a good product idea, poor execution. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Like when talking about the rhythm wolf, that was that was it was a good idea, bad execution. Yeah, That's it was executed. It was it was executed. That was the work. That was the dullest blade in the world. No decapitation there. That joint just gives a nick on you. <laughs> the dullest blade. No that joint. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I've got I got both of those still here, like I, because I'm sorry. You know, I, I hoard. That's but just too bad. Can I would just say I would just say like <laughs> it was it was a good idea. Like at the time, people weren't really doing that, and yeah. you know it was a good idea. It was, but there was a lot of teething issues with, when they were creating that product that that could have been stemmed, and there was also marketing issues that could have been stemmed. But instead, you know, it went the way it did, and now it's internet legend. You know, <laughs> no, I, I feel you, but I, I do believe that companies need to do research in a way. And sometimes that means coming out with a product that remember when Akai did the, the MPC fly. Yeah, I was uh, excited about that. Man, it totally Robin, came that out. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like if they were to do it now. Yeah, be a different deal. It'd be a different deal because look at how much research they have under their belt with the products that they've put out. 
Well, now the thing that would be cool about doing that now is that now the iPads are moving to that USB C connector, and you'd be way less. It, it'd be way less risky because I know for a fact that when they did that, the the changing of connector was a big deal for them, and, yeah, and it, it really kind of screwed them up. And then, um, and that's and, that's aside from how I feel about the pad sensor. And iOS apps can from the next builds that I've been seeing as far as like development iOS apps can now be used on Macintosh OS. So that's going to be happening soon. That's a development that's happening in the next OS update. I just hope that that means that soon we'll get a MacBook that has a touchscreen on it. Maybe. Like, like maybe. With computers from 10 <laughs> yeah. years ago. Yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, but. <laughs> baby steps. <laughs> It's baby steps, and that's what I'm saying. Like we expect people, companies to jump off a bridge. Now nah, they gotta take baby steps because that development takes time. They need to figure stuff out because if they don't figure it out, people are just gonna be angry in line. You're gonna get a bunch of you know moms like, let me speak to your manager, and I'm not trying to have, you know, I'm not trying to deal with that. That's Ken. Ken is like, yo, let me talk to your manager person. No. That's not me. I'm like, yeah. let me talk to the CEO and smack. Yeah, him. yeah, let me talk to the CEO. Yeah, and the, the talk doesn't go very long. <laughs> like that. Yo, Ken is like, Ken is like Latrell Sprewell choking out Van <laughs> Gundy. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I'm super polite and, and courteous and nice to <laughs> everyone that I deal with. Um, it's because they don't know. Oh, bullshit. It's because they don't know Mark <laughs> Polo, you. They don't know Bad Black. <laughs> hey, shh. Sh so hey, let's. Uh, I, I wanted to. You know what I realized? Yo, this is the first show after Nam, and we ain't talk yeah. about anything. Yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, a. Was this a lackluster Nam this year, though? I don't think it was lack. There was some cool stuff for me. For me, honestly, I was more impressed by a lot of the pro audio stuff that I saw. Um, you know, a lot of the mic pre's, a lot of the the monitors a lot of the mixing solutions a lot of that stuff that my brain is always thinking about um so i was impressed with a lot of that stuff when there wasn't a lot of modular there was a little bit of it um not as much as that first year that we were there corey remember mm -hmm. that one year and it was like a whole entire front section of all modular yeah uh, upstairs yeah. and downstairs yeah, yeah it was, they had like a modular village yeah yeah yeah, it was just, oh, man. Yeah, as you know, so um, I think, and I don't know this to be totally true, but I think that Synthplex had something to do with that. So from what I understand, oh, yeah, most people, most of those modular companies, one, NAM costs a lot of money to have yeah. a booth there. And so there was one company that would rent the booth, like a huge booth, and then kind of sublet it to all the others. Yeah, right? and they pulled out. Yeah, and since they pulled yeah. out, then not everybody could afford to be there. And, and so, I'm going to have my booth at Roscoe's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was the other thing. A lot of people were like all over the place. Yo, I mean, I, I literally had to go to a, a hotel room for the teenage engineering thing. I had to go. I went off site for the Moog store. Well, uh, teenage engineering did the same thing last year. Well, not the they same. Were in a van. last year. Remember, they just had that van. Mm -hmm. and, they would, and then they just got all wasted in the van, and everybody was like, "What happened to teenage engineering?" <laughs> teenage they engineering ate, in the they parking lot, like drunk. Edibles and just kind of passed out the van or whatever. Yo, that sounds amazing. Like, Yo, that's the way you get done. They did like Nam, like a freak Nick. <laughs> no, like yo, they in the van eating brownies, dude. That like. That, and that was a real thing because people were really trying to check for uh, what was it? They had the OPZ and um, they had some. Oh, that modular. They had like two operators that were there. Uh, oh, last the year. Oh, yeah. They had the PL32. Yeah. 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 And everybody yeah, was trying to find that. them. And, and they were like, yo, they're out in the van, but I think I think they passed out. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, oh, you know what? Listen, and, and this is all hearsay at this point because I didn't I didn't talk to them in person that year. Um, but yeah, the, the rumor was that they had they had eaten a whole bunch of edibles or something and that they got real nervous or something. For, you know, you get paranoid or whatever, but I don't yeah, know if that's 100 percent true. That was the rumor <laughs> that was going around the floor at the point. I did see the van, but I didn't have time to go up to it at that point. That's yeah. So right. let's go back. Uh, somebody mentioned somebody said, why pay that booth rent? Is that how it works? Yeah. yo. So it's a trade yeah. show. 
And it really is not for the public. It's just that, you know, there's enough media outlets that go there now and and people with any kind of social media influence that has kind of has some sort of in, you know, that's really the as public as you're going to get. Otherwise, this is really a show for music manufacturing, National Association for Music Manufacturers, I think is an acronym. Music merchants. Yeah. Music merchants. So and that's that's the this problem. Is basically, is that- this is basically where all the people that make the stuff go and display the stuff for the people that work at the stores and the stores to go and buy it and make their orders or be impressed with what's coming so that they can do their purchases, make their orders and get it in the stores. So exactly. they have to, it's a conference just like any other conference. You have to pay the booth rent so that you could display because the key is that you should be able to make your money back on sales. But I know people that I've talked to that have been there that don't make you know, it's just an expense, yeah. It's just an expense. It's kind of like, and yeah. then so people start to get to a point where they're like, uh, I could just take that $10,000 and do something special <laughs> and put that in marketing <laughs> and call it one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could do videos and marketing and it'd be just the same. So the, the thing about it also is like, because of that, because of what it is, a lot of it is you will see gear that is extremely early. This gets back mm-hmm. to that earlier point. And it's you have to understand that, like, they're trying to drum up interest in a product that they are currently developing so right. that they can sell it to a distributor. So then you get a lot of like these um, these social media guys, you know, ourselves included, you know. And you go out there and you start showing things. If people are too critical about things, it doesn't necessarily make sense to be that critical when a product is very early on. That's And this gets back to that whole Rhythm Wolf thing. Part of the issue with the Rhythm Wolf was with the first point that they showed it, it literally didn't work. Like, at, like the circuits didn't work. Then the second time they showed it, the circuits were working, but they weren't voiced. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't mm-hmm. honed in at all. Yeah, it and shouldn't have been shown people, and demoed that way. They shouldn't have been showing it to media like that. And mm-hmm. people ran with it and, and it became this whole thing. And then, and then it became a thing where I don't know if it was a, let's cut our losses or what. Cause honestly, I don't really enjoy the sound of the rhythm wolf as it is now. Um, but that product became what it is. But, that kind of like early press that is on an incomplete product being presented as though it were complete can kill a product. When the matrix brute was first shown, you know, it didn't have the, uh, the ladder filter wasn't working correctly at all. Like, you know, and and I know for a fact that after that name, I got, I got my matrix brute that year, uh, maybe six months or so after that name, which was still, you know, eight, eight, nine months before it came out. And there was still a lot of work done. Like I hand soldered some of the changes to this thing. So, you know, when you saw people talking about different products and you're like, yeah, but it's not ready. Like you can't, you can't do some sort of pseudo review on a product from NAM. let alone the fact that even if a product is done and you're on the NAM floor, demoing a product on a busy convention floor that you've never touched before. Yeah. No, it's not a good way to like even pretend like you have some sort of understanding of that product. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you. And then you got the product guys that are there to demo the gear that got the gear two nights before and are still trying to figure it out themselves. Yo, um, you, I just thought about something that I saw at NAM that not a lot of people talked about, but um, it's a company called Elk. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, that's I was just about to. Right? Ask you guys about that. Um, Mind Music Labs. Um, I'm sorry, not a company called Elk. It's called Mind Music Labs. And they have plans of taking uh, rack extension virtual instruments. and Elk making is them, the platform. Yeah, Elk is the platform and making them into Eurorack modules. Awesome. And, and I watched this one video where the guy literally poured it over this rack extension from Reason and he had it in Eurorack. It was mm-hmm. literally in the rack. It was a VST that was ported to a Eurorack module. That's dope. It's like they're, they're developing this platform where you you'll just be able to do that. That's beautiful. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Like this is nuts. Um, so I gotta find the video. I think it needs to. It, it it's the first few products that we're seeing is like guitar amp modeling and stuff like that. Um, but- no, but you did it with a synth, Ken. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, is what's going to be interesting is that 
the point of this platform is to make it easy for people to develop these, exactly you yeah. know these really really powerful digital platforms so it, mm, well because uh, basically what you're doing is you're spending time developing the vst code and then pointing all of it towards the hardware yeah so that's actually really dope because then that means bro we just got to learn how to code in this thing and we can start building our own hardware Mm -hmm. um which is kind of wild i'm with, I'm with software to couple with it you know yeah exactly but i'm curious to you know there's certain things that i'm always concerned about like latency and just well just you don't like latency what kind of guy are you i'm a drummer that's why <laughs> i'm just kidding you know <laughs> yo i feel dude i i'm very sensitive to latency i know cats that can play a, a a machine with the setting on 1024 and i look at them like my g how do you do that like, <laughs> um, uh so that's something that um that's something that i'm really interested in and i'm watching carefully because i have you know corey we talk about this we got some we got some ideas mm -hmm. that we're just like man this I, I got i got the, i got programming on my side oh wow. i have a lot of a lot of modules that I, that I have in programming, like I got some that I've done in Reactor. I have some that I've just done in just like C and C plus uh plus. Uh huh. But yeah, like I'm super excited about any kind of platform for porting over um, programmed instruments into like a tangible surface. That's that's always that's too the preferred method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I'll, you know what that that brings to mind too. That's what I should do. I should probably the. The thing that I would like to see in Eurorack, as far as uh, the kind of sampler I would like to see, I should try to make that in Reactor or something. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. done, I've done, I've done a lot of instruments in Reactor where I, you know, and, and not just instruments but effects too, where you can kind of like, if you have an idea, you can kind of make it happen in, in a platform like that. The the cool thing yeah. about the Elk thing is not just about okay well now we can port this stuff but it also means it opens up libraries you know and yeah. for people who aren't coding yeah. um libraries are things where it's it's almost like shortcuts on how on how you can basically take chunks of already established code that will work in the way that you need and process that into your own code so yeah, it's, it's going to open um, up libraries and make things way easier for for developers yeah, because mm -hmm. node-based programming is, is basically like, um, it's the same as like making a synth patch, you know? Mm -hmm. So like you have programming code that's like little chunks of, you know, like synth modules, and you just connect them together to make like a bigger thing. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really intuitive way to program, especially if you come from a modular background. Yeah, that's, that's dope, actually. I should explore that. That's uh, so let's see. So... So they like, wait, why don't y'all just come together and make some gear? Cool, no problem. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Word, man. Uh, so what else we got out there? Uh, there was uh, something else that we wanted to chat up about. What's 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 on y'all y'all? Oh, as far as Nam, one of my picks was this thing, um, and people were asking yeah, I've been having chat an eye about on that. Um, yeah, so the the micro freak is dope. It's coming along. Uh, really, in the past couple of days, they they've released some some firmware updates for it that have kind of uh, taken it from like this wide perspective and kind of honed it down into into a more playable situation, which is good. Um, I, I'll say it is really surprising how deep it can be with such a basic because you look at it, it's okay. You have digital oscillator. A cycling envelope, um, a uh, ADSR envelope, and then an LFO, analog filter, and then a uh, arpeggiation, you know, a, a ARP slash sequencer. And that's really it, right? And then you got this little modulation matrix. But, man, it gets really deep. Like, you can adjust the shape of the cycling envelope. The cycling envelope goes really, really fast, too. Um, so you can use that as like another oscillator and do AM synthesis and FM with it and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's really surprisingly fun. I will say that I, I really wish that they had Im implemented some sort of, um, reverb or, um, yeah. reverb or delay into it. But at the same time, it's like, if you don't have reverb or delay in your lab, like, <laughs> You know, so like I, I get why it's not there, but at the same time, I find that using it with reverb or delay is like a 
75% situation for me. Like I'm doing that more often than not. Um, and well, so that that's the use case then. If because the first thing I thought when I played it at Nam is that like, yo, I, I I wish it had delay. I was more less reaching for delay. Uh, but although we all have reverbs and delay in the lab and all kinds of car and incarnations of them, the fact that you're using it all the time with one is the use case for even having one included. They, Man, they, I'll just buy the module if they ever come out with that. That's it. that would be dope. But yeah. ain't that just plats? No. So that's the other thing. <laughs> um, it is not Platts. Like, you know, there are a few algorithms from Platts in there. Yeah. Um, they've been expanded and tweaked upon. Um, I know that there was a video where they said, oh, no, it's just exactly that. Um, I don't think that that's actually the case. But there's more so than that. There is. So, like, there's a virtual analog mode from Platts. There's also a virtual analog mode from Arturia. And they're two very different sounding modes, you know. Mm -hmm. And they, they have different parameter controls for each. Um, there's their, their Arturia wavetable mode is very different. Um, there's a... Um, I, I've been programming patches where using the touch plate and, and the, the pressure sensitivity stuff... Um, I've been kind of like doing like Swarmatron style stuff with it, which is really fun. Um, Cause you can get that kind of swelling and detuning and movement, which is. Dog, I don't want sw swelling. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to cut. You don't want to bleed. You don't want to swell. I don't want no bleeding edge. I don't want no swelling. <laughs> Bro. Oh my god. You so out here hurt. Yo, Bleeding thing, edge is swelling, yo. You got one thing I saw problems. people um one thing I saw people talking about online is they were surprised that it wasn't the Steiner Parker filter and that it didn't have brute factor. And I'm like What filter yo, is it again? It it's a it's a SEM style uh state okay, variable that's right, filter. That's right. Yep. Um and it sounds really nice. It's very complimentary to this. And that's one of the things that I'm like, you know. The Steiner Parker filter might be okay with it, but it sounds so much better with a smooth filter, in my opinion. Like, I've put it through other filters in here, and I think they made the right choice by going with something a little bit more tame and smooth. Dope. Dope, dope. Yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing it mature, man, because there were some things that I was kind of like, eh, well, okay, well, <laughs> when I, I was playing it at the, at the NAM. But here's the thing. <laughs> like Ken mentioned earlier, you got to be careful to judge things at NAM because that show floor is madness. And and all of us have been there and, it, and it's just madness. Sometimes you could play sensory. some stuff. Yeah, it's sensory overload. There's stuff going on all over the place. So you just want to get the hell away from certain areas at that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't know. So I, I'll reserve judgment until I can check that joint out in my lab. Bro, that rolling booth was crazy. Yo. Yeah, like, the rolling booth. That's right. Rolling booth was like a madhouse. Yo. I was I like, a... what? I'm like, y'all giving out free crack over here? Because like, <laughs> like, yo. That <laughs> yeah. joint. And then they was having happy hours at the end of it. I'm like, Bro. I, I can't buy, like what? Wasn't it happy hour all day over here? Like, what is this? Bro, it's that, crazy. I, I feel like they was hustling something out of there. They was just like. Yeah. Oh, so so here's the other thing. Nam brought us Electron, uh, the mo the model samples. It seems like th there's not many people talking about model samples, but I think I'm more excited about uh, um, Overbridge and the capabilities of Overbridge. Yeah, yeah. You know that, I mean? that I yeah, I think that's really dope that you have Overbridge now with a recorder in it, so you don't even have to open up your your DAW. You can two track, or I don't even know if it's multi track or if it's just two track. But oh, you could you can multi you can multi track out also. Yeah, yeah, see that's that's dope, and you could just kind of record yeah. your your thing. So some of the stuff that we've been on Ken about lately, ladies and gentlemen, can be over there making mad beats, but in his mind, he's just experimenting and testing. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's 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 testing to death. Everything's testing, but I'm looking at it like I'll be testing mad joints too, but I'll also be making tracks and recording. Yeah, like I, record. <laughs> yeah, like I press record. I man. pressed record. So I'm saying something like overbridge for somebody like Ken. Uh, it just kind of simplifies the process. I think you could just kind of run your joints into that and 
and boom, yeah. capture it. But he ain't well, necessarily an electron dude either. So. Man, so Overbridge, especially with the analog rhythm, has helped me to actually make sample packs even faster because what I do is I use that recorder that's in uh in in the Overbridge where you could just record the output. Mm -hmm. And I'll just sit there and press record and just start designing different drum sounds. And it's all recording in real time. And then what I do after that, I just slice by transient. And then I have all those drum sounds available to use. Yeah. That's dope. And it's like it's like a really dope um, feature to have like a built-in wave recorder in, mm -hmm. in Overbridge. Mm -hmm. That's super dope. I wish I wish there was a feature where that wave recorder would record to the device that you're recording to. Like let's say if you're using the Digitac, that wave recorder was actually recording into like the memory. So that you can yeah, that would, that would, yeah. you know, that way you can kind of SP four oh four it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just so you guys can see it, um if Corey clicks on my screen that already did. Say, I got this you. is overbridge here and I've got my rhythm uh you got it. no rhythm. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, you can see like the samples that I'm using along with it. Like I did um a, a boom shack uh kick from my Euro rack and put that into my rhythm and you can see the sample there and you can kind of adjust all the parameters, you know, in real time on it, which is dope. Um it's 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 pretty cool. Uh I am not using it a ton right now, but I like it and I like I like the fact that I can kind of load it up and use it as a, a easy way to see everything all at once, you know? Okay. It's, it's cool if which, you have I'll, samples. Yeah, go it's, ahead. it's cool if you have samples like on a hard drive or on a computer, you can just grab them and like bring them right in Overbridge and they're in your Digitech, mm -hmm. yeah. which is really dope. That's that really dope. dope. So I haven't been doing too much of that. Um, I was under the impression that you still had to use transfer or something. Is that not the case? Yeah, yeah, the I think it's what's it called? C six, if I remember right. Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm saying you can you can't do it with overbridge though, right? Like you can't use the sound browser to just drop samples into it, right? I guess I can I believe you right can. Now. I believe well, you can. Let's, I let's put it should to the be test. able to. Let me grab a sample. Um I, I feel uh, like you should be able to just drag and drop them joints on the pads. Like if not, that need to be a request. Yeah, because I don't think that you necessarily can, but I'm gonna find out. Uh, let me grab. Here's a sample pack I'm working on now. Yeah, see, it doesn't let me just drag it on there. It's because they don't like you. I don't like me. I mean, I don't blame them. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, it doesn't let you do it like that. May and maybe it's user error. If anybody in the chat knows otherwise, certainly let us know. I'm gonna I'm gonna check when we get this off because I don't have my computer over here. I had to do. I I was doing it the like maybe a few weeks ago and what i was doing is i was still using transfer to do this um so yeah i mean unless somebody knows otherwise to me that's a that's kind of a miss if it can't do i that. feel like that they have transfer and that's good but i feel like if they're gonna have a new overbridge they should have the transfer functionality built into the new overbridge. yeah that should be exactly. part of overbridge yeah <clears throat> I'm sure it will be because it is still in beta. It is. It's beta. Yeah. It's not. It's not quite prime time yet. And I think mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot to that once uh, Digitone. Uh, how old do you think that will be when it's not in beta anymore? Just well, how's re how is, what's retirement <laughs> age? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, will I, will I have a force by then or no? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hold on. Let me let me hold this up. I'm just playing. I, I have all. I still uh -huh. really enjoy how, how that rhythm sounds, man. It, it is a really cool sounding piece of kit. So let me hold this up. This is uh, my case. I still got my... Obviously. You know how to so, use that thing? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole point. You, you shouldn't know how to use anything that you have. Hey, well, you know, this is, <laughs> this is a trip, yo. So I got this uh, cable with these adapters and stuff. I've been sampling off of my iPhone because I'm lazy. <laughs> and that just was convenient. And so it works. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of thinking about, I'm not sure if I'll keep this guy in there or not. What are you doing? You, what are you using to do that? Using the line amp? What do you mean? To yeah, no, actually, I'm going straight into the into the, the joint. Well, into Reflex? Yep, the yeah. Reflex Live Loop. Oh, dope. Yeah, so you can see I have uh, two patch cables. Dope. And then, you know, a couple other, like a, a Y cable. 
and then I drop it down to, I mean, it literally is a contraption. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I'm using to uh, to sample in. Yo, yo, what's up with what um, what's up with uh, Aaron over there? He's like sleepy and bored. Oh man, dude. Yeah, I mean, yo, you guys are talking about his computer stuff, man. I don't, I ain't hey, Aaron, I, I want to bring some. Stuff. <laughs> I want to put Aaron on blast. I want to put Aaron on blast right now, guys. All right, so. Here's what's going to happen. This is kind of an intervention that's been waiting to happen. Yeah, Aaron, yeah. what I want you to do right now, I want you to take a long patch cable. I want you to patch from your make noise into your mutable instrument case. <laughs> I can't do it, man. I can't do it. Yeah, you know what? I love that just because I can't it's, so, it. it's such a quirky view, but I get it. The, I know where he's coming from because the make noise joint is its own thing. And it's beautiful. It sounds good. It's like yeah. its own instrument. And he's like, yo, that's separate. That ain't even really Euro rag. That's like a <laughs> synth of its own. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? I can't, I can't be bothered plugging that into my regular Euro rack case. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. They're next to each other, but I, I can't. I can't do it. I'm on my elite case right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not. I'm not plugging it in there, man. I can't do it. That reminds me. I gotta pick up marbles, man. Oh, oh yo, let's see. wait. We haven't talked about the coupons, man. Oh uh, um, yeah, that's crazy. How could we not talk crazy. about the How can you? I mean, all right, let's go get whiskey, and then you guys I started one. That. Who else ordered one? Who who else ordered a coupon? I haven't ordered mine yet, um, because I just picked up a Zadar. Well, I Woo! have it in that case right there, and I got a, actually a, a couple videos to do on it because I want to demonstrate some stuff. But I've been playing with it nonstop, like it's been. Uh, a part of every patch that I've been kind of experimenting with, and I just love, but that, that's also why, too, I'm starting to explore a little more, get to kind of reacquaint myself with ornaments and crimes so I can modulate the crap out of yeah. the, the radiate functions and, and all the different stuff on there. What's that you're holding up, Ken? What is oh, that? Never mind. Do you think do you think that the Rhythm Wolf is going to become like the 808 of the future? Like it's actually, like you know what? So, so we've had this discussion sort of a little bit before, but here the the real one is going to be. It'll be the Tomcat, if any of them, because the Tomcat was done in such a smaller quantity, and mm -hmm. way less people seem to know about it. So it'll be some weird indie band in the future that's going to use it, and the next thing you know, it'll Steve, blow up. Yeah. I gotta get one. No, I will never. <laughs> yeah, I I'm, I'm gonna stay away from up. that. Yo, them joints is like a hundred dollars, man. I just and I them. had both of them, and I made. Listen, I didn't I, say it was look, a fair deal. Look, Ken, yeah. I'm, I had both of them, and I made some dope ass sample packs out of them. Oh, I did too, dude. And I, no did, one, I did a sample pack. No of the, one will of the top ever cat. know. No one. I will sampled six hundred and fifty sounds out of that thing. Yeah, no one will ever know that it was a Tomcat or or a freaking Rhythm Wolf. The but Tomcat kick, the Tomcat kick, and the Rhythm Wolf kick are both actually. Bro, really I had to take the shower after using them joints. Yeah, they're, they're, but oh, see, that's not where they fall down. Though. They don't fall down by the individual sounds. Where they fall down is when you start using it all together, and then you turn. You know, it, it's just voiced really badly all together. You yeah. know what I mean? But individually, they actually do sound really good. A lot of the sounds do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's like yo, yo, hold on, hold on. Yo, 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 yo. Whatever. Bryce, yo, Bryce, yo, Bryce is in the chat. What up, upright? Uh, uprights oh, in the oh, chat. Man. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm but he didn't put the smiley face out there. His comment is he being mean? I'm about to text him. <laughs> He's just yo, <laughs> yo, yo, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce gonna come in here like yo yo Ken, can I get that? Cause I'm starting to make beats again. Let me get that rhythm wolf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bryce blew up the 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 Marco Polo chat one day. He came in playing new beats, and oh, we was all like, "Whoa, what's going on?" Like, <laughs> it's Corey, crazy. Corey, yo, Corey, you know what's gonna have to happen, yo? What's I'm gonna up? Have, I'm gonna have to challenge Bryce. That's it. I feel like that's gonna have to happen. I'm gonna <laughs> the Bryce. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna call it right now. If if Steel, Bryce, and Corey all get into it against Beats, 
the end resulting beats are going to be so sloppy off time that I'm going to fall out of my chair. <laughs> They're going to try to outswing each other. <laughs> no one can outswing me. That's all I'm saying. Oh, man. That's, oh, I'm sorry. That's like the king funny. of like, crazy off time beats. It's going to be like it's a battle of the slop. <laughs> I'm going to have like 10 Pamela's new workouts in the world. All on slop. Gate delay. To oh, the like hour. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If I chain up 15 variegates, can I make my gate delay in the next week? That's right. <laughs> you have so many gate delays that the track don't even start till the eighth bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, he don't land in shows now that, that when we get there six months from now, he's like, wait, the gate's about to hit. <laughs> That's the snare. <laughs> <laughs> show no, 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 no. Show up. That's how we got to get Bryce. That's, that's it. how we got to get Bryce back, man. We just got to challenge him and be like, hey, man, we know you got muscles and stuff, but you ain't on these beats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wild. Like, hey, uh, I told Bryce, though, when I saw him uh, a couple weeks ago, I don't even remember if it was last week or a couple weeks ago, but I told him, like, yo, you got to come through the studio, man, and just... So we could just bang out stuff like just just get in the lab and just try out some gear. Get get him back to a place where he might be leaving here going to uh to perfect circuit. Like, all right, man, <laughs> I'm headed in the opposite direction now. <laughs> That's what's up. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm getting at him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so let me ask you something. Uh with that Q pass, um, mm -hmm. You've had it for a little while now. Are you finding anything in it that that is like surprising you with it? Like, what about it? Are are you finding that you know it is a little bit different than you were expecting, or what? Um, you know what? I, I'm, you know, it has a lot of sweet spots, but when you get into the smile pass mode, it's a it's such a sort of uh, weird thing, and it does what I know it could do, what I said it could do you know when you have like low pass and high pass kind of going together but when you're in a smile pass mode you really only notice i can't say you only notice it but the sweet spot for me in smile pass mode is when you're modulating the radiate parameters and so you could really hear like what's happening on either end of the spectrum you know what i mean and also i like the fact that it kind of distorts a little sweetly when you push the uh what's that <clears throat> It's basically it's basically the level, but uh, when you the kind VCA of push is before the the filter, right? yeah, it's before the filter. Yeah, so yeah, when you yeah. push that, it kind of it kind of distorts real nice and sweet. And uh, then there's the uh, what is this? I don't even know what this knob is called, but it really is like resonance. But I don't know if it's called resonance. But when you push that up, you kind of get such a sweet ringing, and you can modulate that too. It, it actually is better than I even thought it would be. And, and you know it kind of adds a real lively vibe to everything you put it on, man. It's just a real. That's sweet the first filter. filter I've seen really since uh, Rossum came out with his filters. Um, that that really got me um, kind of sitting up and taking notice. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm I'm pr I'm still pretty interested in that. I'm also still really interested in um, Qubit has that prism module. Yeah, which is yeah, like an dope. effects it's like a 3d effects thing like right. that thing has me the more i watch on that the more i'm getting a little bit like man i could i could see me rocking that heavy. i want all them joints man i want prism cord two and um, i'll be cord honest two, man, bro cubit like aesthetically speaking i love how their stuff looks like they just they they get it like as far as like i i really enjoy how their how their knobs are spaced, like everything on it, like the look of it, it's just pleasurable to use their stuff, you know. Yeah, it's it's really good, man. I'm having a ball with the Nebula too. Actually, that reminds me, I have to update the firmware. They just came up with a new firmware. Two point uh, right? Yeah. Dope. So, yeah, man, I gotta do that in a bit. Do you know what all that was adding? I was looking at it the other day, but I um. So a lot of it is like save features. And uh, like, you know, cause when you turn off the nebula, it resets back to like the original sound on the card. So what it's, it's like a lot of improvements for like saving. And, you know, like when you power off, it saves it in a state where when you turn it back on, it's back to how you had it before rather than having to start all over again. So there's a lot of like a little fixes. 
and stuff like that. So I need that because every time I power my system back on, I got to start from scratch and I don't like that. <coughs> Which is, you know, it's it's it comes with the territory of modular, I guess. Starting from scratch all the time. So whatevs. You know what I like, man? I'm looking at Zadar. I like the fact that, you know, somebody say the name. Of, is it Chaos? I think it's Chaos. The name of the chaos. company, even though it's spelled X-A-O-C. It's chaos. Yeah, it's chaos. Yeah. So they make the Batumi, and I really love the Batumi. I love the fact that they do quad everything. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I think Zadar and and the Batumi in a system like you really getting into some real powerful dope stuff when you using like I can see those together featuring uh, or complementing each other really nicely. Bro, I'm happy I got the Zadar man because. Well, I, man, I stood up last night watching mad videos on it and just like seeing how people were using it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And man, here's another thing that really bothers me about modular stuff, man. A lot of people use these modules the same way. And then when I'm looking at it and I'm like, no, you can use that in a whole completely different way. Because all the videos I was watching, same. I used it the same way. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, don't you realize there's mad stuff you could do with this? That's so like it's something you're saying right there. I did um, friend of the show, Fam Bam, uh, the Daydream Sound, his episode 20 of the Samplers podcast. I was on that. It's out right now, his mm -hmm. website. And he interviewed me. And it was a real good conversation, man. And then one of the things he said on there when I listened back to it was like, yo, that's so true. And it speaks to what you're saying, where nowadays... It, you know, there's so much information readily available that you get caught up in groupthink before you realize it. And so people get a tutorial, see a demo, see a review. That's how it's used right there. And everybody only do that with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody totally. thinks outside the box and thinks about the, you know, being creative. It's like creativity is lost because it's like uh, all these tools out here that you could use. Back in the day, you had a piece of gear, it had its limitations, it had its bugs that companies didn't give a damn about fixing, and you figured out a way around it, and then that's how you get the explosion of all kinds of stuff that we know and love now in, in, in yeah. certain musics, you know what I mean? Also, it's like a group think in yeah. music tech. <laughs> also, know? man, a lot of people, man, they're just afraid of taking risks, man. They're just afraid of taking risks, afraid of being themselves. You know, yeah. and um, man, modular. The reason why I was so attracted to it is because I figured I was like, yo, I can make my own beat machine. Mm -hmm. I can make my own yeah. works the way that I want it to work. And you know what? If I need a new filter, I can just go get one. That's you know? what's beautiful like, about it. Yep. And I love it, yo. So when I was reading the stuff on the Zadar, y'all know how I'm obsessed with like timing and delay and stuff like that. The fact that all these envelopes these can be delayed. Yeah. That means I can, yeah. like, I could have this push and pull feel with all this stuff with my envelopes, how I'm triggering it. Man, this is dope. It's going to be a great addition to like my drums and my percussion, even my modulation on how I do stuff. And I'm really I'm on the perfect circuit site right now, like contemplate if I'm gonna pull the trigger on it. Like bro, yeah, you got you might want to think about it because you know that I mean that's the hottest item right now. And then, bro, you might you might need ooh. to do that before it's out of stock for like another year. Yeah, yeah. It might be out of stock. Uh, I hate y'all, bro. That might be, I, that one might <laughs> because be I was up till 3 a.m. and that was one of the things I was contemplating about too. Because <laughs> you guys talk, you guys talked me out of getting the Q pass last night. Mm -hmm. Because well, yeah, because well, no, not me. I, I leaned on the Q pass, I, but, but I ain't mad at you. To, I'm not trying to wait till they get more Q pass particles to make more of the joints. <laughs> <laughs> you know like, like, I just, like yo, I, I want to get that joint when it's available. So <laughs> when I saw that the Zayar was available, I was like, I'm getting it, and it's the right time. But yeah. I'm not. There's more Q pass particles to make more joints. I'm, I'm, I want to get it when it's when they got them ready and cooked. And yeah, yeah. I think make noise is cooking those up though. They're, they're pushing them out. No, I know, I know, and that's why I feel like I'll just get them where where they're like the <laughs> next round. But yo, know, for the record, there's only one way to use the Zadar, dude. 
No, you gotta no. put it. You gotta put it on the Richard Divine presets. Nah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dog. Let's take a look at that, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> nah, yo, chill, cause yo, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say something like, no, this ain't <laughs> yo, bad. I took it personal. It's like, like yeah. yo, no, he's a cool dude, man. Like I seen him at Nam. You know, got to shake my man's hand. He a little dude too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like man, you you do some damage, man. Like you you. But no, that's not the head. one. Um, he he did. Um, but in my head, seat. I was th- in my head, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, you don't need that many modulation sources for it. <laughs> uh, there it is right there. There it is. A sample and hold. Glitch and hold. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, I was like, my G. I'm like, yo. It started off as a sine wave. Now that joint sound like like a thousand three hundred pound dudes hitting a hockey puck at the yeah, same time. <laughs> oh so so but to 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 be fair when I look at Bank Z it's not just like envelopes by Richard Devine it's glitch and hold by Richard Devine. No, right? I'm, so I'm, I'm, at I'm, least at least stuff, it's not a misnomer, right? Because when you right. look at those waves, I'm like wow I'm I don't know if I'm going to the Bank Z. That's because it's not, no, it's not I'm my go, no, style you, of music. I'm gonna go to Ben <laughs> B and I'm gonna slow them joints down like crazy. There you go. So, that makes sense. You probably get some real dope pinging and craziness yeah, that way. That's like, true. Ben Z got some, he got some stuff in it, man. Um, and that's kind of what's exciting for me. I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, that looks kind of wild. That looks I like see, I see nothing to gripe about those waveforms. They're just different waveforms that you can. That's your kind of waveform, Ken. I see. Yeah, I, I, I just don't see anything to, to gripe about either way because, like, if you want smoother stuff, there's other smoother stuff. No, well, that's, that's it, what's it dope exactly about it. What yeah, you can smooth those joints. They look out. like exactly what he's advertising it as. Which yeah, you can smooth stuff. those so joints out too. Use that to use that for your gate delay clocking and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because a lot of these joints look like Bart Simpson dreads. Amazon hit and go. Bottom joints. Oh, I see the Bart Simpson joints. That's what I'm saying. Like some of these joints are like Bart. You got the you got the Bobby Brown Gumby joint. Yeah. You got the gum. I see the, I see the Nino Brown. The Nino Brown. Joint. <laughs> the Nino Brown is in there. You got the Daddy. Look, and then play, four, you got the kid and play. You got the kid and play. Yo, this look, is cool. number four is the West Side <laughs> Blonde Demolition Man Gumby. Yeah, you know and then oh, B B ten. B ten. That's like the De La Soul. Me, myself, and I. Was I. Gonna say you got- Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you got you got the Bart Simpson, you got the Nino Brown, you got the Demolition Man. Then right. You got, then you got Batman that got an ear blown off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, <laughs> this look like the poster when you go get your hair. Yeah. Of all the That's true. Days. Hey, yo, give me a BF. Uh, then, you got, uh, then, you got, then you got the beard comb. You got the beard comb. <laughs> And you got the upside down goatee and Ben J. You know what I'm saying? You got uh, beard. yo, this joint right here. That hairline is crazy, bro. That's uh, then you got the, you got the um, J two. I just want to say like that, that hairline has got the widow's peak just yeah. like you. <laughs> then you got Show the that widow's peak. Yo, then you got the bikini wax. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. Got <laughs> you even got the high heel shoe that that J ten right there. They they really put it all in there. Hold yeah. on, hold on. Do you see? Do you see that K? The K nine. K nine. Yeah. That's like that's like when you get the shave spot right there from the nineties. Yeah. No. Get that tight line in there. <laughs> yeah. But no. I'm just. I, I'm. I'm really excited about this module because the fact that they give they give you all these shapes, but then you can control the shapes. You can change yeah. the depth. You can change. Yeah. You can delay them. The fact that all this is here. Um, it's super dope. Oh, somebody, somebody even want that go thing? Go. I'm gonna go on up there today. On off track. Yeah, hey, why don't you go over there, Corey? You right hey. there. Nobody even want that. I hate that thing. I'm gonna go on up there today. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> and the first Man. ones I'm gonna mess with is the Bank Z. <laughs> I'm gonna put that prison pre order, man. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, man. Yeah. Shout out, shout out. Much love to um Richard Devine. He's he's brilliant. Um, and yeah, um, I agreed. I like, but I like this product regardless of of his um involvement yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a great product, and um, but I had to go with the Q pass. So. Now nah, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that Q pass too, man. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, for me, for me, it was the fact that I was waiting since October. And 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 Damn, like, that's crazy. It's like as soon as you canceled your pre-order, yeah. they came available in stock know, right? like the next week. <laughs> you that's waited hilarious. since September and then you like, canceled the order and the next I was week. Like, I can't take it no more. <laughs> I can't take it no more. I've been on pre-order since October. And then next week they're like, yo, we got a whole shipment. They must have a lot of them because they've been sitting on the um on the site for the last 24 hours. Yeah. So I be getting mad when I be watching people's Instagram videos and they got them, and I'm like, yo, how yeah, this, how this cat got a Zadar? Like, who he know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if you if you're on the East Coast, uh, a lot of people are copying them from uh, Control, Word. Um, yeah. in, yeah. in Brooklyn. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I feel you. That's right. Yeah. That's right around for me. That's right around me, man. Yeah, man. Word. So, yo, man, we we uh we well into this show. We, yeah, we all wait in there. Real quick. Plug something, man. Before we get into it, and um, not be swelling. I'm gonna uh, <laughs> go ahead and show this thing real quick. Um, so come, uh, hold on, let me share it. <laughs> what? <laughs> so come, uh, what Paul. is it? April, um, uh, April seventh. I'm gonna be in Dallas, uh, for Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, oh. so we're doing the. the there's gonna be a, a synth party thing. That's happening at now. I, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I should know way more details about it than I do, but <laughs> but the fact that you call it a synth party thing it tells look, us. <laughs> yeah, look, 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 you click on my screen, you can see the the thing. Uh, you can check it out. Go on to Facebook and check it out. Uh, it, it's a synth party 2019. Anyway, it's basically gonna be a big synth meet in Dallas Fort Worth area, and um. So I'll be I'll be down there already because I'm doing a sound design project down there um, in in concert with uh, Balconis uh, whiskey. Dope. So, um, yeah, d basically a guy down there is being real gracious and setting up a, um, a dope event, and we're gonna have some some manufacturers there and doing a bunch of other cool stuff. So That's if dope. anybody's in that area. Um, you know, you have the information now, and I'm sure more information will come as we get closer to April. But I just wanted to shout it out real quick. Dope, and I want to make sure everybody knows. Check out uh, um, Synthplex. So Synthplex is basically a, a, a new synth show that's going to be an annual synth show, and uh, we'll be up there doing a mod bat panel. It'll be uh, myself, Aaron, and Shiro. Uh, I was hoping to be able to have uh, ski beats and D still there, but yeah, maybe I'm next time. Country. Yeah, I'm out of the country, man. I won't be able to. I'm not even <clears> here, man. But it's all okay. good. We, it's going to be a real dope conversation. Uh, I'm trying to get my man Jay Story to be the moderator while we oh, discuss. Dope. And we're just going to talk about, yo, modular synthesis and hip hop and beat production. You know what I'm it's saying? Insane. So this should be a real dope thing. So it's, it's Synthplex, Synthplex at the Marriott Burbank, and it's gonna be uh, at the end of the month, March 28th, 29th, and 30th, I think it is. So, That's yeah, man. Are you performing, Corey? Uh, I'm not performing, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna have either the MPC X or the Force with me, and I'm gonna do like a beat deconstruction of, of you know, a mod bat beat deconstruction dope, while dope. we're talking about it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it should be should be fun. I'm really looking forward to that. This is going to be real dope. So if you are in the L.A. area or you're going to be in the L.A. area or even if you ain't, come to the L.A. area <laughs> and, and kick it yeah. with us at this uh, Synthplex joint. We this, should, get, this should we get Bryce to just intimidate people. Just yeah, so. Bryce, should, yeah, Bryce, you got to come through. It's not acceptable that you can't. Or that you won't. You you got to come through. So, yeah, it's going to be historic. Um, it, it's going to be really important. Um, and um, I'm performing. I know Shiro's performing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know who. I don't know who else. Is, uh, I'm, I'm surprised you're not going to perform, Corey. But the construction sounds dope too. Yeah, that's what I want to do, man. Like, yeah. yeah, deconstruction of beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if you all seen. That, that's I think that aspect of it because a lot of people don't get to see that side of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm gonna just have a couple. Couple Captain joints there. Patches, man. They'd be like, join my Patreon and see my patches. Nah, dog. Just let me see them joints right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Join my Patreon. Too, <laughs> <laughs> man, 
um, modula and the way you know you end up sampling or or pulling stuff out of modula. When you look at, listen to some mod bap beats, there's sometimes so much going on, so many layers, and some things are subtle and some things are not subtle. It's yeah. tough to tell in your mind what's what and what's happening. So I want to be able to kind of solo things and show you know kind of what's happening. You know what I mean? Yo, that that's what I love about our Marco Polo group because we're literally on there all day. Like, yo, how you do this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yo, how you do, yo? Mm -hmm. Hey, man, should I get three of these or like? You know? <laughs> no doubt. That's, that's straight up be the question. It'd be like, yo, so I'm thinking about getting two more of these kinds. Uh, I'm thinking about trading in these and get this kind of thing. <laughs> Aaron, be like, Aaron be like, hey, man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Aaron's Aaron's go to uh statement is you already have the tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, don't buy that. Until Zadar happened, then he was like, everybody go buy, 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 buy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's what's up, man. No, Zadar, Zadar is something special, man. But yeah. I can't I can't wait to the synthplex. Um I think it's going to, like I said, I think it's going to be historic. Um, make sure everybody yeah. checks out the podcast. That was really, really amazing. Um, props to you, Corey. Uh, you did a great job on that podcast. Oh, word. I'm going to um, pull it up just so people can see it. Yeah, big ups big ups to the Daydream Sound. Um, yeah. Oh, no I, got, I got something yes, going on. I got something going on uh, March 3rd. i um, doing a show with Div Kid. Um, oh, boy. Oh, yeah, wow. man. Dope. Yeah, he's gonna, be, uh, he's gonna be interviewing me, and we're just gonna be talking about some stuff. So it's gonna be pretty cool. I mean, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's, that's really dope. Yeah, I yeah. always love being on a in a, in a div kid on div kid shows and anything like that because he's just a good dude. And, good dude. He's yeah. a good dude, and also man, just full of a wealth of knowledge, man. I, I, you know me, I'm just a learner. I just love like asking questions and 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 having strategic thinking about stuff so for me that's what modular has helped me like do like just kind of have like um a different way of thinking with music man so yeah certainly it. it stretches your creativity i love that oh about, yeah that's yeah. that's really what i really love about it but hey just so you guys know this is the the interview that i did definitely anybody that's checking oh. out the show right now that checks out the show later uh, check out this. Go to the Daydream Sound and click on the Samplers Podcast. I'm episode Yo. twenty, and it's a, it's a it was just a good conversation, man. And and uh, um, you know, you get a chance to kind of learn a little bit about sort of why I do what I do and why we all kind of do what we do and what where the passion uh, kind of junction of that stuff is. So yeah, check that out. Anybody else got anything they want to plug on the way out? Next um, summit show is coming. Rob, the next summit show is coming when? Um, should be in the next couple weeks, like week or two. It's gonna be uh Rob Pappen. Oh, oh no! Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. <clears throat> okay, and uh, yo, uh, D Still, what's the latest uh products MSX got out? Uh, man, I, I don't just, know how y'all keep up. Anyway, I'm I'm expecting you'd be like, I don't know. I gotta pull up the site. Man, coffee. <laughs> coffee. Coffee keeps us going. Um, yeah, it is. And man, honestly, we're just very, we're very passionate about doing things that we just like, man. A lot of people, you know, they make sample packs based on what's popular. We don't mm -hmm. care about that stuff. We're just like, no, nah, we want to make stuff that we're doing at the moment that we're excited about. Um, me and Simp uh, and JK, we just talking about SPs and just the vibe. And how all that stuff works, and we just make, let's make some SP drums. So what we did is we just recorded live drums, and um, processed it in our you know in our way that we do, and then just made them hit hard. You can check out the demo video um, that I did for that joint, um, and it's it's really 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 dope. So yeah, that's that demo is nuts, yo. Yeah, that's the latest kit we put out. Drums from the SP four, drums out the SP four four. Um, and it's all original, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just stuff that no recycled sounds. We we every we record audio, you know what I'm saying? Like that's something that's right. that we do. Um, so yeah, man, that's the latest joint. And come see us at msxaudio.com if you need samples, if you need inspiration, if you need something that that'll just give you that kick, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. It'll be super dope, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, Word up. And she or what you got going on, man? What as we get out of here? Oh, uh, I guess check out the Patch C V film at at on patchcv.com. Dope. Um, so featuring myself and a bunch of other dope artists. Oh, where, and, where's that at? Um patchcv.com. Dope. I'm gonna check that out today. Yeah, I saw I saw your contribution, Cheryl. Very impressive. I loved it. Um, but I, I haven't heard the I haven't heard the record though. I haven't heard the um the compilation. Yeah, they just they just dropped the second one, I think like last week. Yeah, I saw I saw that Nerd Audio had like the cassette and the vinyl. Um mm-hmm. but um are you gonna are you gonna have any of that for sale at the Simplex? Um, I'll I'll hit them up and see. I'll, they might be there. I'm not sure. I'm gonna hit them up and see if they're gonna participate. If not, I'll see if we can rep, represent them. And right. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Um, I saw you also had Digitone presets, man. Oh yeah, the yeah, Modbap yeah, Digitone really presets. That's ill. The Modbap one is coming out in about. Should be out in like a week. Dope, dope, dope. Sure, what's your YouTube? I'll, I'll get one out. My YouTube is on Vulture Controller TV. So, word, my man. And what were you just showing, Ken? You were showing the patch CV? Yeah, yeah, I was just showing that patch CV, but, uh, word. Then, you know, mm. I navigated it away because I'm not a good person. Okay. <laughs> so do we get everybody? Because we're going to be out. And we know Ken uh, ain't a yeah, good person, man, so that's um, not news. No, I'm going to have my new record um, at the Synthplex, so dope. come check me. Dope, um, dope, dope. I'm going to have my, my new joint. I, I only pressed... Uh, yeah, Aaron, show that again? Show that again? Oh, 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 this joint. Dope. And you know what? I plan on having Mod Bap t shirts for the. Yeah, yeah. So I plan gonna, on having have some merch. Yeah, Mod Bap t shirts at the Synthplex joint, too, at the Mod Bap panel. So, yeah, on the real, though, come through. And uh, kick it with us. So get a chance to shake our hands and just kind of see how we do what we do. This is kind of uh, almost like the that sort of uh, that first sort of big step to kind of launch this movement <laughs> in, a, in a bigger way. So I'm excited about it, man. Word. Yeah, I'm really excited. This is this is this is it, man. Word up. So yeah, this is the Beat People Podcast, episode 44, coming to a close. Thanks for checking out. Sus- subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out all my people on the panel, and uh, we out. Dope. Peace. Peace.